In this video, we will learn how to calculate and examine how compound interest can lead to financial pitfalls when not paying back money for a loan or credit card. I'm Abby with NextGen Personal Finance, and you will practice seeing how compound interest can hurt you when borrowing money. Compound interest is interest on the interest you already owe. It can work in your favor, like when you're depositing money into a savings account, as taught in our other video, but it can also work against you, like when you're borrowing money for a loan or credit card, which we'll take a look at in this video. Let's go over the compound interest formula and what each variable stands for. We have A equals P times 1 plus R divided by N, all raised to the N times T power. A is the final amount. P stands for initial principal, which is the amount of money you borrowed. R is the interest rate. Remember, it must be converted into a decimal here. N is the number of times you are compounding per year. For example, if it were monthly, N equals 12. If it were quarterly, N equals 4. And T is the time in years. Let's try this example. You have $4,000 in credit card debt, and you aren't able to make any payments on the card for three months. Your APR is 22% compounded daily. How much will your credit card balance be in three months? First, we must identify and substitute our variables. For the compound interest formula, we need the principal, interest rate, number of times it will be compounded per year, and the number of years. We know our initial principal, or how much you borrowed, is $4,000, so let's put that in for P. Then we can drop and keep the addition of 1, which just stands for 100% of the original amount. But then we need the interest rate as a decimal. It is provided to us as a percentage of 22%, so we can convert it to a decimal by moving the decimal point over twice to the left, which gives us 0.22. Next, we have N, which represents how often we are compounding per year. Since the account compounds daily, we know that it will then compound 365 times per year. Finally, for the exponent, we need N once more, which we know is 365. Then we will multiply by T, or time in years. Since three months is one quarter of a year, we can put one fourth as T. Now that we have accurately substituted our variables into the formula, we can use order of operations to solve. First, we can carry out what we have in the parentheses so we can drop and keep the 4,000. Within the parentheses, we have addition and division. According to order of operations, division takes first priority, so we can divide 0.22 by 365, which gives us 0.00060274. I will wait until the very end to round my solution to the nearest whole dollar. Now that we have completed the division in the parentheses, we can now add the one within the parentheses, which gives us 1.00060274. To continue simplifying our equation, we can calculate 365 times 1 fourth gives us 91.25 for our exponent. Our complicated formula is now a little less complicated, and now we only have two more operations to carry out, multiplication and exponents. Following order of operations, we must first carry out the exponents, so we can drop and keep the 4,000, and then take 1.00060274 to the 91.25th power, which gives us 1.0565. 2314. We are almost there. The final operation of multiplying the 4,000 will give us a final answer of 4226.09256. This means that if you do not pay off your credit card with a 22% APR after four months, you will have to pay back $4,226. This means that you would have had to pay an extra $226 just in interest alone for not paying on time. Let's review how to calculate compound interest. First, 
you must accurately identify your variables, the P, R, N, and T in the formula. Then you can use order of operations to solve. Finally, you can frame the solution in the context of the situation you are being asked to examine. Now it's your turn. You take out a payday loan for $500 to cover some of your expenses. The lender charges $10 for every $100 borrowed, which needs to be paid back in two weeks. This means you have an APR of about 261%. How much would you owe the lender if you couldn't make the payment on time and it took you two months to pay them back? Well done on learning and practicing how to calculate compound interest. Continue on to the practice problems on your worksheet. You got it!